And we're talking you decide in our interview with Governor Henry McMaster. After trying to schedule a sit-down interview for weeks with his team, we were told it just was not possible with his schedule. But they did grant us some time with him during his bus stop in Greenwood on Friday. And after speaking with supporters, we spoke to him on a number of issues. This is a this Greenwood is a great city, a great county, in a great state. I can remember years ago when the railroad tracks were still here and they, they were removed and the, the, the city has just gotten more and more beautiful every year. And the, the same thing is happening across our whole state. We have the right policies, the right people, the right attitude, the right traditions, and people excited. And in, in our tour, it's a 19-stop tour, uh, and we, we see excitement, enthusiasm, and great, great hope about the future. And it's because we're doing the right things. We're having capital investment, record billions in capital investment, putting more money into scholarships in, in schools, holding down the tuition at the colleges, more scholarships, especially in our technical colleges, which is where so much opportunity is found. Uh, we're making law enforcement even stronger, and that, that, is, that is key eliminating the pay on veterans, retirement pay, cutting taxes, preserving our beautiful landscape. We have treasures here in our state. And it, there have been some years where we, we haven't paid enough attention to that, how important it is. But the three pillars of our strength in our state, which we've recognized, and that is our economic growth, our education, and the environment. And the, these men here help help keep the people safe. You can't work, can't send your children to school if you're worried about safety. Can't sleep well at night. But with school resource officers, trained, certified law enforcement officers, in every school, every, every minute that school is open is our goal. We started with about somewhere around 400. We're now up to almost 1,000. And we get a two, 250 more. We'll be in every school in the state every minute that school's open. That'll take a lot of pressure off a lot of people. We're doing the right things in South Carolina, and we're going to keep on doing it, despite the interference we're getting from the Biden administration and unconstitutional mandates and other things. You bring up the Biden administration, focusing on your ads and your speech today. You're bringing up Washington a lot. Are you running against Washington or Joe Cunningham? Well, we're all running. We're running for our, our people, and anything that affects our people is our business. And the Biden administration, contrary to the Trump administration, Trump administration was helping at every, every turn. Employment was going up. Our, our enemies, foreign enemies, were petrified uh, of, of our, our country. Our friends, our allies were comforted and, and strengthened. People, it was booming. Then the Biden administration came in. First thing they did was quit building the wall. I went down there to El Paso and Del Rio. And you could see where the, you could see the the wall going in this direction. It got hit, stopped. Tra the uh, construction equipment and all the materials were lined up and left. It looked like it's brand new. So we don't have a border there. We don't have a border there at all. Our foreign policies in shambles. All of those things, these those those policies, more and more money spent on 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 things. It, it just they've gone crazy with the money that they're spending. It has to be borrowed from somewhere and paid back by our citizens. So yes, everything the Biden administration does has an impact on us. When the Biden administration was trying to shut down the whole country, if it hadn't been for the 28 Republican governors who stood up against it, it would have been shut down. Churches would have been shut as it were in blue states. Uh, married couples are trying to get married, were getting arrested. Businesses were closed for, for no constitutional reason. And we, we fought that, we won, and that is one reason that South Carolina is flourishing today. Your opponent's running on a campaign of legalizing marijuana, legalizing sports betting. Are those on the agenda at all for the next four years? Well, what we're running on, uh, Pam Evett and I, is, is what we've been doing. We have a record of accomplishment. I've mentioned those things, more capital investment than ever before. Over $5 billion in one year, and this year in over. We've cut income taxes, eliminated the tax, income tax on retired veterans' pay. We have scholarships for children, young people going to college, uh, including technical college, 79 million. And that's really where a lot of the action is today, more than ever before. 
and we're going to shut that revolving door, that catch and release that uh, some of our uh, judges are participating in for one reason or another. Catch and release is good for fish, but not for violent criminals. Two more questions, guys. As for, far as abortion, it's the main issue going into this election. You've got a gridlock in the House and Senate. You also have the fetal heartbeat bill now in the hands of the state Supreme Court. Are you willing to put it to the voters and put it there on the ballot? The well, issue the House and the Senate are not through. As you know, they, they have conferred uh, just, uh, just recently. Uh, they, what I'm telling them is that we need to be sure. Take your time. Don't rush. Don't slow it down. Don't speed it up. Take your time. Listen to, to all opinions. Get everyone's understanding. Look at the facts and decide what we want to do. Are you willing to so put on I, the ballot I, at all? I have, I have said that what we want to do is to have a, have a bill, if they produce one, that will be acceptable to most, the, the great majority of the people in the state. The laws that we have now both have four exceptions, the four standard exceptions that are recognized and in included in, in many of, of those uh, laws around the country. I've, I've asked our legislature to be careful, to be considerate of, of all views, and if they produce a bill, to, do, to produce one that will be acceptable to the great majority of the people in the state. Yes. Thank you. Now, as you saw there for a glimpse, Governor Master was ushered away by his team for a moment. But after talking to them a little more, we were able to speak with the governor on one other issue, education. Take a listen. You have two drastically different candidates for state superintendent. One is opposed of vouchers. One is in favor of them, advocating for school choice. Where do you stand on vouchers? I'm 100, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm 100 percent for school choice. Vouchers are part of school choice. School choice, uh, there are many different options that would produce school choice. School choice, uh, by another word, is competition, and competition leads to excellence. Uh, I know Ellen Weaver. I've known, I've, I've read what she's written. I've uh, learned what she wants to do, and it is precisely what I want to do. So I am looking forward very much to having a strong relationship with Ellen Weaver. She, she knows what needs to be done, and I look forward to helping her. Any sort of uh, message to the voters who are concerned that you may forget about public schools? Public school, that's where most of the children go, is the public schools. We must have great public schools. How do you have great public schools? By having educate, having, excuse me, Public schools educate most of the vast majority of the young people, the children in the state. How do you have great public schools? You have to have great teachers. We need to have, that's why I've raised the teacher pay, the legislature, and I, uh, $10,000 uh, just, just since the time that, that I've been off, in office. But it is competition. Competition breeds excellence in everything. Athletic competition breeds excellence in business breeds excellence in everything. It's all intertwined. So when you have competition, you don't have a closed system, but you have competition. That's what school choice is all about. Let the parents make the decision. Let the money follow the child. Let the parents be involved. And we end up with a stronger education system that is teaching the right things. Thank you so much.